Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today I'm gonna show you how to make an apron. Apron. You know, you put on an apron and you just feel like you're ready to get to work. Putting on an apron for me is almost ceremonial. It's ritualistic. I go into the kitchen. I might be cooking something that might make a mess. You put on an apron, you know you're ready to start. You're going to paint something. So I have a kitchen apron and I have a work apron for my workstation, which has paint all over it. It's just a great thing to have when you're working, an apron. And both of these aprons I made myself. I've been making aprons since I was a teenager. My first apron I made, I can remember exactly when it was. I was a new volunteer at Pioneer Village and I was volunteering in the halfway house where we baked 25 loaves of bread every day. And I had an apron from the costume department and I thought, I would like an apron that fits a little better. So I figured out how to just make one myself. And it's not hard, it's very easy. Uh, that's what we're gonna do today. Making an apron that fits you. I don't like these aprons that have hardware, like metal pieces on the collar that are adjustable. I always find that, that metal stuff around my collar, it just feels uncomfortable. I like an apron that has a cloth ring around it to go over your head and cloth ties but none of this metal hardware and if you're going to make a cloth apron that has a cloth collar like this then you need to kind of make it to your size to fit you that's the wonderful thing about making an apron also making an apron doesn't require a sewing machine you can do it entirely by hand. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to sew an apron entirely by hand. If you've never sewn anything before, this is also a wonderful first sewing project because it's very simple and it's fairly easy. So, let's get to it. I like to make aprons out of a fabric called ticking Ticking was a cotton fabric that was used for making mattresses, very tightly woven cotton that was thick and durable to hold in the straw and the feathers. Ticking, that's what this is. It's traditionally striped, and I think there's something very beautiful about a plain striped apron. So that's my personal little tradition. Whenever I'm making an apron, I make it out of striped cotton cloth, preferably ticking. So here's one apron made out of a certain kind of ticking and here's another apron made out of a different ticking. Ticking is a very specific weight and weave of cotton. It's a heavyweight cotton that's very tightly woven so it's almost like a canvas. It's a thick durable cloth and it has structure to it and that's why I like using this for an apron because it's sturdy. The other thing about using ticking or any striped cloth for this project is it helps you cut the fabric out straight because you follow the stripe. So that's a practical aspect of picking a striped cloth. You don't have to do this with ticking. You can do this with any heavy durable cloth. But today I'm going to demonstrate on some beautiful linen cloth. This is a striped linen cloth that I found. It's thick and it's very tightly woven, but uh, it has a stripe to it and that that's what I love for an apron. And you'll see why it helps with this whole process. So the first thing is we have to draft out the pattern of the apron onto the cloth. For an apron, the first thing you wanna do is figure out how wide the bib of the apron is. The bib is the part that's gonna be over here. What I do is actually measure across here for the width of the bib. 
and I want the apron to kind of cover my boobies. So 11 inches is the width of it from end to end. I'm going to make it a little narrower, so I would say mm, 9 inches. And if my finished apron bib is nine inches, I'm gonna add two inches to it that are gonna get folded over to form the edge of the apron. So nine inches finished, about 11 inches unfinished. So that's the first measurement that I have over here, 11 inches. And then the next measurement that I want is from the top of the bib to my waist and your waist really is around where your belly button is. So it's your, your natural waist when you're, if you were a seamstress or a tailor, to find the natural waist of someone, you put a string around the narrowest part and it usually is where their navel is. So it's right here. So I know, okay, my belly button's my waist. I'm gonna take a measurement from the top of the bib to belly button and that's about 10 inches so those are the two measurements I'm going to start with 11 inches wide 10 inches down so my last measurement I'm going to take is how how wide I want the apron to be at the bottom like when it goes around my waist it's going to sort of sit over here and it's going to tie at the back so I'm holding both ends of it. I'm not going to go all the way over here. I mean, the apron's going to end kind of over here, covering my waist, and it's going to go to back here. So about that wide, and that's 26 inches. And I'll add an inch to that, so about 27 inches. And this is what I'm saying about not being... I'm not fussy with these measurements because it's... It's an apron, it's not a pair of pants, it's not a blouse, and I want it to sit kind of loosely. Take the measurements carefully. This measurement, this measurement, and this measurement, and add two inches to those measurements, okay? So whatever this measurement is, add two inches. This measurement, you're not gonna add two inches to. And this measurement, you're gonna add two inches to. A little thing about fabric, the way the fabric comes off the loom, you have the warp threads that run up and down the fabric and you have the weft threads that go sideways. And on either side of the weft threads, you have a finished edge of the cloth called a selvage. The selvage is a, a bound edge to the cloth that will not unravel. So this is the part of the cloth on the bolt that's on the edges. When you go to the fabric store and they unroll it and then they cut it and that cut edge is raw, it's unfinished. So this is a cut edge that is unfinished and this edge over here on both sides of the cloth we have what is called the selvage and this is not going to unravel, it's unfinished. So I actually like to use that as, as the edge, one edge of my apron because it means that I don't have to sew this. I don't have to fold it over, it's already finished, it's not going to unravel. The overall width of my apron is going to be 27 inches, which I'm going to fold in to make the edge seams, so it'll bring it down to about 25. And then the measurement from the top of my apron to, oh my knee, let's say that's how long it's going to be. That's 28 inches, and I'm going to add two inches to that because I'm going to fold both edges and finish them. So I'm going to make this 30 inches long when I cut this. So I'm going to have a piece that I'm going to cut out that's 27 inches wide by 30 inches long. The length of the apron is your own preference. I like the apron to end at about my knee. So I'm taking the measurement from approximately where the top of my bib is to my knee. And I'm adding two inches and that's 30 inches. But if you want the apron to be shorter or longer, this is the wonderful thing about custom making an apron. You make it however long or short you want it to be. So, 27 inches wide by 30 inches long. I'm just going to mark that. Right here, making a little chalk mark. And I'll snip it as well just to remind myself that's where it is. 
There's a little mark there. The first cut I'm gonna make is my along the edge of my stripe. This is the great thing about striped fabric is that here's my width of the cloth. I'm going to cut along that turquoise stripe all the way down. And then I know I'm cutting with the grain of the fabric. And we'll talk about the grain of the fabric in a bit. Almost there. I'm gonna stop about there. And now I have this mark over here on this side, which is the 30 inch long mark. And I wanna cut across here. Now how do we do that? And how do we make sure that that cut is going to be straight? You might think, oh, you take a ruler and you put a ruler down and you just measure it, but you don't do that. There is an actual technical makeup to cloth. There are threads running this way and there are threads running this way. And when you're cutting the cloth, you want to make sure that the cuts are straight. The, what we call that is cutting with the grain of the cloth. And cutting with the grain of the cloth means that my cut is not just a random line that I've placed with a ruler. It has to be technically along the very same thread. I have to be cutting along the same thread line all the way across in order for the piece to be straight. Because it might look straight when you're cutting it, but it could technically be not straight. And the way that that affects the garment is that when it hangs on you, it'll be warped. There might be a little weird crease or pull to one side of it because you didn't cut the cloth in a straight way. Mass-produced clothing is often very quickly made and fast fashion entails garments like shirts that sometimes you put on and they just don't sit right on your body and that's because not total attention was paid to cutting the cloth on the grain. It takes time to figure out where the grain of the cloth is running. So the, what we do at this point to figure out how to cut a straight line across here is we have to actually pull out a thread. And I'll show you how I do that. You get a pin and you pick a thread with the pin and you pull that thread out. And this will work on certain cloth and sometimes the cloth is just too delicate and you can't pull a thread out and then if that's the case then you find a thread and you very carefully try to follow it with like a chalk line or a pencil line so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this thread in my left hand and I'm gonna gently pull try to pull it out of the cloth by gathering the cloth delicately and you, you're, you're pulling it away from the edge while holding onto this so that it's taut. And what this is doing is it's actually pulling this thread out. Oh, sometimes it breaks and that's okay. If it breaks, you find it in the middle. So what I'm gonna do now is, since it broke, you can see right here where the line is. Do you see this line? That is the straight grain of the cloth. So I can cut along that line. So there is where the thread broke. I'm gonna get my pin and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna pull that thread out again. I can see that right here is that broken thread. And I'm gonna go in the cloth and just pick that one thread out with my pin. See that? I pulled this thread out. And now I'm going to hold that thread and pull. And what's gonna happen is when this thread is pulled out, it's gonna leave a blank space, a very tiny blank space in the cloth because that thread is now gone. So that thread that I've pulled out has left an empty space in the cloth, which you will see if you look very closely, and that is the cutting line. That's how you know you're cutting along the grain. This is a very elementary sewing technique. Finding the grain of the cloth to make sure that the cut is straight. If you don't cut cloth along the grain, it might look straight to you, and then you make your apron 
all the seams are evenly folded and evenly sewn, and when you hang your apron on you, the edge could be crooked, or this edge could be crooked, because you didn't, you didn't actually cut it straight. You thought it was straight, like while it was over here, you put a ruler down and you're like, that's a straight line, but part of the cloth was warped a little bit, and you didn't actually cut a straight line. So this is, this is the way of finding the true straight line in the cloth. There's no denying that this is a straight line in the cloth because it's a single thread. So you can see here, can you see this here? That there's that little ridge that was created from pulling the thread. That's what I'm cutting along. Okay, so here's the piece of cloth. That's the excess. Here's the bottom edge of my apron. And I can be sure that that is straight because I pulled the thread to make the grain straight. This edge was the edge from the store that when I bought it, they just cut from the bolt of cloth. They didn't pull a thread to make sure they were cutting a straight line. And I can, I can see this is not a straight line. So I might think, oh, maybe the straight line is here, but there's no way of really knowing. So on this side too, I have to pull a thread to find the straight grain. And I, I don't usually pull the thread up here because it, it could be very crooked. I usually pull the thread about, oh, half, a half inch down. I can kind of see, I think this was cut in a very crooked way. So I think over here is the safest place to pull a thread. You see that thread coming out? I'm, and I can see it. So I'm just picking that thread up with the pin I'm pulling it out a little bit with the pin first. And then when I have about that much of the thread, I hold it, right? And I pull, and look, it very beautifully starts to gather the cloth. Because it's because I'm pulling the thread out of the cloth. Don't pull too hard, because if you pull too hard, you'll break that thread. You just, there's a sweet spot that enables you to gather the cloth the whole way. This is how much thread I've pulled out. I'm keeping it wound on my finger to anchor it in place. And I'm almost to the end. There. So now, look at that. Can you see have a very faint, but it is there from one end to the other, a line. And that line, that line is undeniably the straight width of the cloth. And if I compare this line to the cut edge, this cut edge is on a diagonal. So if I assumed that this cut edge was straight, and I made my apron this way, that top edge would end up being crooked. So, I follow this line and I cut. Great. So, I have my overall block for my apron cut out. So this, this was a tricky part, making it true to the grain so that all edges are straight. There it is. Next thing we need to do is cut out the bib. We need to cut out the top part. The way we do this, is we start by finding the center of the cloth. So we fold it in half. And this right here, this point in the fold is the center. I do a tiny little clip to mark the center. That little notch is the center of the cloth. And now, this measurement from here to here was 10 inches. I take my tape measure and I measure down 10 inches. And because I'm gonna lose some of this, the top of this cloth, because I'm gonna fold it over to make a finished edge, I'm gonna make it about 12 inches. Okay, 12 inches. I'm gonna mark on this edge 12 inches. And now, what I need to do is cut out a shape that's going to be 
the shape of the top of my apron going down to the sides and there's a curve there. So what I do is I find how wide do I want this to be? Oh, 10 inches wide plus one inch for seam allowance. So 11 inches. So I'm gonna find the center of 11. So the center of 11 is five and a half. So I line up the five and a half with my center notch and I'm gonna mark 11 inches over here. And we only need to do one side and I'll show you why. So I have the top width of my bib and I have the length of where the bib ends and you draw a curve. So you can get an apron and you can just trace the curve or you can just do this by eye and I do this by eye. Start at the top with my chalk, I, draw, I go straight down and then I start to curve out towards that line that I marked at the bottom. And you want this to be a nice smooth transition. And when you and then straighten out. So this line is up to you how you shape that. That looks pretty good to me, this shape. And I know the shape of an apron. So I've marked it with my chalk and what I'm gonna do now is fold this in half. And cut out. I'm gonna cut out that arch. With the cloth doubled. So it's gonna cut it out on both sides. There. So now I have what you can see is clearly an apron. Hold it up, try it out. Looks pretty good. Now, this is this is like this is very fun is seeing the actual apron cut out. We know that the grain is straight, the edges are straight. The sides are cut out, now we go to sewing. And before we go to sewing, we need to do a little bit of ironing. So, for those of you that have never sewn anything before and that don't know anything about sewing, you can't just take this and wear it because this will fray. Do you see the fabric? It's, it, it will come apart. The edges are unfinished. You need to finish the edges and the way you do that is you create what's called a finished edge or a, or a seam. And what, what I'm gonna do is I'm essentially just going to fold over all of the edges twice. I'm gonna fold them over once and I'm gonna iron them and then I'm gonna fold that edge over again. And what that does is it takes the raw edge and it encases it inside the perimeter of the whole apron and then it won't fray. So I'm just going to show you because I think demonstration is much better at explaining this. I'm going to fold this over about half an inch and if you don't know what half an inch is get out an actual ruler and measure that half inch because you took the time to find the straight grain of the cloth. If you want those edges to be straight and you're not experienced in this, measure them. Measure, fold this over, press your ruler up against it, find half an inch, and then go over here and find half an inch, and go over here and find half an inch right to the very end. I'm, I'm very good at this because I've seen a lot of things. I've made like blazers and trousers and capes and wedding dresses and corsets, so I don't need to measure this part. The other thing, about having the stripes is you can clearly see when you fold over the seam allowance if it's straight or if you're folding it over in a crooked way. Right here, the stripes are lined up with each other. If I fold it this way, are those lined up? No, they're not. So, you know, you've done it wrong. Take your time, 
line up the stripes. Look at this. If I pull too much, if I stretch it while I'm folding it over, then the stripes are also not aligned. So that is another thing that it's telling you. Don't pull and stretch the fabric when you're folding it over. Making this with stripes is the way to go. Making an apron in striped cloth is a great way to learn elementary sewing techniques because all of this stuff is elementary. Folding over a half inch seam allowance properly, we fold it over, we get our beautiful 1950s vintage iron and we fold the seam allowance over keeping those stripes lined up with each other and look at that look just look at that that's a thing of beauty okay so that is one fold but if I took this and I sewed this edge, it's still unfinished. This edge would unravel. So we need to fold it over again. And because now I have half an inch that I've measured, I can fold it along that edge. But if you're unsure, again, take, take your ruler. If you can't feel that edge, then take your ruler and measure this one too to half an inch. And again, I'm using the stripes to line up stripe to stripe. And the second fold is what's creating a finished edge. Ironing cloth, especially if the cloth is damp, and I did dampen this by spraying it with some water, you're shaping the cloth. There's a very beautiful thing about hand sewing where you can sculpt, you can actually use the cloth as a material to sculpt with, and you sculpt it to shape it in very subtle ways. The couture houses in Paris, they're the epitome of creating garments that are sculpted by shaping them with steam and hand stitching to create very subtle effects that cannot be created by machine stitching. So this edge, you can see, it's finished. I folded it once. I folded it twice, I've ironed it, even though it's bouncing up like this, like a little bounce, that's all right. Let's do the seam allowances for all the straight edges first, because the hard part is, is this curve right here. Ironing this, there's a little, it's a little tricky. So I'm gonna do the straight edges first, and then I'll show you the other edges. bottom edge also okay now this curved edge you can fold it over and iron it but the second fold is very tricky because that curve it makes everything wonky because folding and ironing along a curve is kind of fighting the cloth, so there's a little secret. And along this curve, I'm gonna make little snips about a quarter of an inch deep, starting at where it curves and going every, oh, one and a half to two inches. And what that does is it enables the fabric to be folded over and sit flat. You can see that when it's just like this, it's just, a, it's just a snip, but when I fold it over, it spreads open into a little V, and that's, that's part of the sculpting of the cloth. It's a, little, it's a little essential thing for ironing a curve flat. And you can see, I'm going to iron this seam, and look at that. As it's folding over, those little cuts are opening up. And then we fold it over again. The 
You want to iron down all your seam allowances before you start sewing. And that sits beautifully flat. I'm going to re-iron the top so that my corners are nice and crisp. And now we're ready to start sewing. It's so nice to have a sewing box. It's like a little treasure box that has all your sewing tools in it. So to start sewing, you need a needle, maybe from your very old Victorian brass needle case, beautiful brass needle case that opens up like this, your brass needle case that opens up like this. We could get that close up afterwards. Okay. So I'm going to get a nice sewing needle. This is a short needle for hand sewing. And you need a thimble. Maybe you want to get out your silver thimble that was made in 1923 stamped, hallmarked, 1923, because that means it's 100 years old this year. It's kind of essential to be sewing with a 100-year-old thimble, silver. <laughs> a thimble, okay, why do we use a thimble? Uh, a thimble helps you push the needle through the cloth, through the layers of cloth. It is essential when hand sewing. It's, it's essential when hand sewing if you want to do it properly. To learn how to sew with a thimble. Because you uh, should learn how to sew very delicate cloth and you should learn how to sew heavier cloth. And when you're, so, when you're sewing through heavier cloth, you want to be able to push the needle through without poking your finger and, and poking your finger till it's bleeding. So that's why we use a thimble. I have this beautiful silver thimble, but I also have this Taylor's thimble. It's just like my little treasure box with the treasures. The Taylor's thimble traditionally has an open top. So, it's like this. And you want some thread, some sewing thread. I always like to use 100% cotton thread when hand sewing or linen thread. This is pure linen thread, and because the apron is linen, I'm going to use linen thread. Let's get to it. Let's get to hand sewing. If you don't know how to hand sew, it's a very, very, very nice thing to learn how to do because you can make simple things like this. You can hem pants. You can fix your clothes. You can sew a button back onto a shirt if it pops off. I think everybody needs to know how to do some hand sewing. So when we cut a length of thread, this is the length that you want from your sternum, from your clavicle to the end of your arm span. And then you double it because we're going to use a double thread. And the reason why we do that is because when you're sewing, you're pulling like this. And if it's too long, then you end up having to keep pulling. It doesn't it doesn't ease the efficiency of the process if the thread is too long. If it's too short, you need to cut more lengths of thread as you run out of it. So this is the ideal length. It's because you're doing this as you're sewing, okay? So we have our double thread. I like to just run my thread through some beeswax. It helps prevent it from knotting and tangling. Just run it once or twice through the beeswax. And then I get my needle and I thread my needle. Thread the needle. So that's threaded. And we meet up the ends. So end to end. 
and you can tie a knot in this if you want, but I don't tie a knot in it. I kind of tack the thread into the cloth as I'm sewing. So you can tie a knot in it if you want. Um, and now we can start sewing. So let's start sewing on a let's start sewing on a flat edge, a straight edge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be sewing with what's called a fell stitch, F-E-L-L, because -L, we are felling the seam. We're taking the seam and we're putting it down. And the, this is like a fell stitch or a slip stitch. I take the thread and what I do is I insert it into the cloth from far away and I emerge at the corner where I want to start sewing. The ends of the thread are, are tucked in the seam. I don't pull out all the way. And I'm just gonna take this thread and do a couple of stitches on this corner here to anchor it in place. Okay. There, and now it's secure. So that's why I don't tie a knot in my thread. And now I'm going to start sewing towards myself and as I'm sewing, I'm going to make sure that these stripes are kept in line with each other. Okay, so I insert the needle into the cloth on the bottom, just picking up a couple of threads from the cloth on the bottom, and I push it through the very edge of the cloth on the top. And I'm using my thimble to push the needle through. That's why the thimble is essential in this. And I pull like this. So what I'm doing is keeping those stripes aligned. I take the needle, I insert it into just a couple of threads of the bottom at the edge of where that seam is, and then I pick up a couple of threads of the cloth on the top, and I pull it through. And I'm making my stitches about a quarter of an inch long. So they're not tiny, but what happens is we see the stitching on the back of the cloth as these long stitches, and on the front, they're just little pricks. You don't, they're in, almost invisible, because I'm only picking up a couple, of, a couple of threads from the fabric below. And for demonstrative purposes, I am sewing with my hands far away from my face so that this appears clear on camera. But if I was actually sewing without you here, I would have this on my lap. I would actually have it on my thigh. And that's a very traditional way of sewing. If you go to, to, Inc, to London and you go to Savile Row, you can pass by some of the very old tailors that are still making suits the old way. And when you walk, when you're on the street, there are these basement windows, and you can see them. You can see the tailors sitting on their workbenches, sewing on their thigh. This is one edge, and you just continue sewing along all the seams. You get to the very end of this one, and you sew up the side. You sew up the side and along that curved edge and over the top, back down the curved edge until everything is sewn. And you can, you can really pay very close attention to every single edge, like this open edge right here, which is folded and it's secure. You can even sew that shut with little tiny stitches. So it's up to you how, how finely sewn you want to make your apron. I like to sew every little bit of it closed. The stitches are placed about a quarter of an inch apart. And if you've never done this before, it's probably going to take you a while to make even stitches. They're probably going to be all different lengths and all over the place, and that's fine. You can practice on a little piece of cloth. You can take a little scrap of the same cloth. You can fold over a seam with your iron, and then you can practice one seam on a scrap piece of cloth before you go to your good cloth if you want. I would strongly suggest that if you've never sewn before. 
but I've been doing this for many years. I've been doing this since I was, I think, six or seven years old. My mom had a business making curtains. It was a side business, and she was always sewing with the machines and by hand. So I learned to sew very early on, and when there were mistakes in the sewing, she would say, what is this mistake here? You have to take it out and do it again. So the tension of your stitching is also important. You want to pull the thread until it just bounces back. You don't want to pull it too tight or these stitches are going to gather and cause the fabric to pup, pucker. You don't want the fabric to pucker. So I put it through, I pull, as soon as there's a little bit of a bounce, I stop. And then that stitch is secure. Once all of the seams are sewn, like this, and all the seams are sewn, uh, you want to iron it. So this has been sewn and this has been ironed. You turn it over and iron the seams flat, because after they're sewn, they're kind of wonky and puckered, the edges, a little bit. So you press them all, and then the next step is attaching the ties. I have some beautiful options for ties. I like to use like cotton or linen tape for the ties of the apron. And you can find stuff called twill tape. It's used as a construction material in garments like on men's suits and in certain women's dresses. It's used inside, you don't ever really see it. But it's a beautiful cotton tape that is in this herringbone weave. It's beautiful, I love twill tape. And usually it's just a beige color. But certain places will have twill tape in different colors. Very often it's synthetic, it's not cotton. I found this wonderful twill tape at my favorite trim store, East Coast Trimming, here in Manhattan. Donna is so nice to me. So I was like, hi handsome, how are you doing? She knows what to say to me to make me feel good. That's all you need to know. If you want to make me feel good and you see me in the street, hi handsome. That's simple. See, it's easy. Uh, so that's Donna. And whenever I go over to Donna at East Coast Trimming, I tell her exactly what I want. She has a million options. She makes it hard for me to choose. So it was hard for me to decide what to choose for this apron. She said, how about this? Great twill tape. And then she was like, but I have some linen from Japan. So she had these linen, this linen tape. I think for this specific apron, I'm gonna use this linen tape. Both look great, both options. I like for it to be a natural fiber because you're gonna be tying it. Like you're tying it in a bow, it's going around your neck, and natural fibers will really break in very well. Synthetic fibers are plastic. I don't like that. How nice. Aren't those so nice? Now, you need to cut a piece It's gonna go around your neck to, this is what's great, custom made. You want the apron to sit up here, you make it this short. You want the apron to be a little lower, make the tape a little longer. So I've cut this band for the neck part and I'm gonna sew it to the wrong side of the apron. I'm just going to fold over the edge twice and I'm going to sew it right here. And then I'm going to do the same for this side. I'm going to sew that right there. But again, you don't just sew it on without folding over the edge twice to create a finished edge. This is the professional way of hand sewing without making a knot. You insert it far back and then you emerge where you want to start. And then you don't pull the tail of the thread all the way through. So 
there are all kinds of different stitches for hand sewing and if this is something that interests you I would recommend getting a book and a great book that I have is called Couture Sewing Techniques which is an instructional book Sewing is a very peaceful thing to do. I find it very relaxing. It's a meditative activity almost. Sometimes you really need to push that needle through many layers of cloth and it's hard. And if I wasn't wearing my thimble, I would not be able to get that needle through the cloth. If I pushed with my bare finger, the needle would go through my finger, not the cloth. So the thimble is really essential for hand sewing. And beginner books tell you to just put it on and to sew with it and you're, you will figure it out just out of necessity. You'll figure out how to use it. People are like, ah, oh, look at his thimble. <laughs> nicely tied on. So here we have the finished apron. Handmade, a great first project to learn the elementary techniques of cutting fabric and sewing it together, making an apron. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, but please subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thank you, goodbye.